the secrets of the heart. When Naaman the prophet came before David, and David was glad to see the prophet of God because he was a man that loved God with all of his heart, mm -hmm. all of his heart. And Naaman told him a story. He said, King, you know, there was a man that only had one little sheep, one little ewe sheep. And he said, there's a great man that came that had many sheep, but he took away his sheep. And David said, that's not right. David was the kind of man, when he seen something wasn't right, he'd stand against it. When he seen something right, he'd stand for it because he's a man after God's own heart. And he said, he took away his only sheep. He said, he will restore him fourfold. And you know what Naaman said? You are the man. That's right. <laughs> and, David, <Whoa. laughs> and David melted. He did not rebuke the prophet. No, he wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And David knew he got caught because he'd been with Bathsheba. See, he'd seen Bathsheba taking the bath. David had 500 wives, but he wanted her. She looked so beautiful. He just had to have her. He was in the flesh. He broke the laws of God. They was living under the laws of God. They didn't have the Holy Ghost, but the secrets of his heart was made known. Mm -hmm. And he bowed down to God and said, I have sinned. And God said, you'll pay. The child that Bathsheba is going to have will not live. So the secrets of the heart. There are preachers today that preaches the gospel that's alcoholics. There's women today that's got children that's not of their father, like in the... In not the, of their husband. They're not of their husband. Men. They'll be in the spirit world, and they say, Oh, Daddy, good to see you. He says, I'm not your daddy. <laughs> so many women have children. They have loves, but they're not of their husbands. And what about the men that are the father of those children? That's right. The men are the father of those children. So this is Secrets of the Heart. I know gospel singing groups as alcoholics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've, been, I've been in this 56 years. And uh, most preachers are in it for their own selfish reasons. They do it to be rich, to be powerful, to be famous. They don't do it out of a true, humble heart because they want to please God and they really want to get people saved. I've been in tent meetings all across America with David Turrell, A.A. Allen, Oral Roberts, Lee Gerard, and all the big tent preachers. And I was out one night standing up behind the tent praying, and this lady that worked in the choir, you know, she was out walking around and around like a big Cadillac claiming it for herself. <laughs> <laughs> I claim this in the name of Jesus. <laughs> What was her heart? Now, did she was she there for Jesus to do the will of God, or was she there because she wanted a Cadillac? <laughs> Some people will have secret loves; they'll love them all their life, and that's it's the way it's the way of the heart. And, and the day God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, He'll judge the secrets of men, mm -hmm. and thus see they said. Now, I want to tell you the biggest secret in the world today. Okay, you ready for this? You little children that follow me, this is the biggest secret in the world. He said, when people come into your meetings, he said, don't speak in tongues. He said, they won't understand what you're saying. But he said, prophesy. And said, the secrets of his heart will be made manifest. And so fall down on your face, he'll worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Now listen to this. This is the most of it. I know a woman. She had three babies. Two of them wasn't of, was of her husband. They was of a, other men. She couldn't stand to go to a Holy Ghost meeting. You know why? Because 
her sins would be revealed. <laughs> That's right. And that was just killing her. This is why they want the Bible in the church. Yeah, because the Bible cannot discern their hearts. It cannot show their sins. They hide behind religion because they look so holy and righteous. They pay their tithes. They think that by claiming scriptures that their sins are forgiven and that they're covered under the blood of Jesus, but they're not. They never really repent. They never really come to Jesus. They think in religion that they have this all under the blood and that they're going to go in there and be fine, but they're not because Jesus, they haven't come to Jesus. They haven't repented from living after the flesh. Their purpose is a fleshly purpose. Why do they come to God and come to church in the first place? Not because they want to do the will of God. If they did, they would suffer persecution and they would give up their will after the flesh. They come to him because they want to have a good job. They want to have a good home. They want to have a good husband or wife. They want to be a part of the community. They want to be rich and powerful. And then when they suffer anything, they, they get mad. They don't, they'll fall away from God when persecutions arise. So what is their heart really wanting? What is the secrets of their heart? Do they really love God? Like Job, who suffered the loss of everything? No. They love God for what God will give them, and when He doesn't give it to them, they don't love Him anymore. I've been in this 59 years. There are alcoholics <laughs> that are preachers. There's gluttons that are preachers. There's all kind of sin of uh, concupiscence. And it's all there. I've seen it all. And these, these people that preach holiness, and you don't watch television. And I've watched their members. I used to know their members. They'd come in Walmart and watch television. <laughs> yeah, that was a sin. I remember being in one of their homes, and they got on to me because one Sunday I was washing my clothes, and they said, oh, that's a sin. And the TV was on in the other room. Some kids were watching cartoons on TV, and this man said, oh, I'm not going in there. You know, that's a sin. And the very same man, we saw him in Kmart watching TV in Kmart. They are hypocrites. So the secrets of your heart will be made known. So cleanse your heart. Don't let nothing be in your heart that's ungodly. And now I want, to, I want you to hear all this. This is kind of boring in a way, but it has deep, deep truth in it. And he told his disciples, he said, I'm going to tell you the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Them that are without you, you other... Bible worships, you'll not understand these, mm -hmm. these parables. Seeing you may see, and perceiving hearing you may hear and not understand, lest at any time you converted your sin. I know this parable, and then you will know all parables. Now, I've seen this with my own eyes. The sower sows the word. I have a word from God. I'm a witness for God. The Bible's not. These are the way that fell by the wayside. The word is sown. When they've heard Satan cometh, me and Pumpkin has actually seen a man one morning. Mm -hmm. We told him the Bible was an idol, and he was so excited. But that afternoon, it was taken away. Mm -hmm. And immediately, Satan cometh and taketh away right. the word that was sown. Right. They have no root in themselves, so they endure but for a time afterward. When affliction or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. That's what happened to him. His wife told him, Oh, no, you know, that's not true. The Bible is the Word of God, and the Bible was the Word of God. But the Bible is no longer inspired. Now, Jesus is the Word of God, and He speaks to us by the Holy Spirit. And these are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the Word, and the cares of this world, their homes, their family, all their riches, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things, entering in, Choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, and some a hundredfold. Even the mystery, the mystery, which has been hid from ages, and from generations, now is made manifest. Mm -hmm. To whom God will make uh, known the riches of the glory of the mystery, the Gentiles, which is... Christ, Christ in us. In us. Christ in us. That's the hope of glory. Not in a book. And I Christ will pray the us. Father, and he'll give you another comforter, that he may abide in you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. See, we walk by faith, not by sight. 
Now they didn't know them, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you, he shall teach you, who shall teach you? The Holy Spirit shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now children, the Holy Ghost will teach you by the Spirit. If you need to be taught from the Bible, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. And you will know them by their fruits. Do they have spiritual fruits or fleshly fruits? They say, well, I have the Holy Spirit. Maybe they've been touched by the Spirit. I don't know. Some of them have. But when they rely on the Bible for truth, then they don't have the Holy Spirit. They quench the Holy Spirit. If you have God in you, he will lead you. He will guide you. You have his nature in you. If you need the Bible to show you the will of God, then you don't have God in you because it's a thing, it's a seed, the seed of Christ in you, the mystery. Now, there's a few people out there amongst all the millions and billions of Bible worshiping people, and you can tell them immediately. They say, that's right, that's right, that's what I've known all my life. And now I know this by the Spirit. It's been confirmed to me. And the ones that can't, and they claim to the scriptures, and they quote you a bunch of scriptures, they are not of Christ. They do not have Christ in them. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but you will not come to Jesus, that you might actually have life. You need to come to him. All right, now you and I have been together for 43 years. Mm -hmm. Known each other for 44. All right, name me something that keeps people from God. The main thing that keeps people from God is their faith in the Bible. How about money? Money and... Um, if How about love, uh, concupiscence? Yeah, they love a certain person that they want. How about power? Yeah, they want power and fame. Now, we've seen it all. And they want fun. They want to have a fun, exciting life. And they want the Lord to bless them. Just like these preachers that say, This is my Bible. It is what I sa says I am. And I can have what it says. That's what they want. That's why they flock to these people. So why do they man. use the Bible? Because they can do their will after the flesh and not do the will of God. And we've seen it all. Over and over. And we've seen some people that the word went down in and they knew this was true. But when persecutions arose or they were going to lose something they wanted, do you, do you want then these, they leave. Do you want these people's money? No. Do you want power over them? No. What do you want? I want them to have life in Christ. I want them to be reconciled back to their Father so they can have eternal life. This life is temporal. This life is going to pass away. You're going to lose everything here. You need to be reconciled back to your Creator. Creator. He didn't die so you could have a good flesh life and then go to heaven and have a better flesh life. Do you want to take 10% of their money? No, that was under the Old Covenant. That's right. And so what do you want them to have? I want them to have the Holy Spirit, which is God in them, and He will teach them all things. And so he she's telling them. you the secrets of their heart that we've I've understood now all of my life. And if you they only wanted to use us. That's they right. don't want God. And they only want to use God. They want to use Him for His blessings. Why do they all come to healing ministries or prosperity ministries? Because they want God to bless them in the flesh. Why don't they come to a ministry that tells them the truth that causes persecution and rejection? Because they don't really want God. That is the secret of the heart. What do they really love? Do you really love God? Or you just pretend to love God? So the secret of the heart is this. This is the greatest mystery of iniquity. Now the mystery of iniquity is simple. Satan got something of God. Do you know this is the Word of God? Actually, the truth. The Word of God was written by the finger of God. You shall love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength, and love your neighbor yourself. Talking about Israel. Thou shalt not steal, kill, commit adultery, covet, and all those things. Those were the words of God. God anointed them. But it was given because of transgressions, because of sins. He gave them them rules to control them. It was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. That's the biggest mystery in the world. 
So the basic, biggest mystery in the world, they take what they say is the Word of God, which is not the Word of God. This didn't even come into being until the 15th century. They had a Bible, and King James didn't like that Bible. He had the Bible taken away and put in the King James Bible because he said that Bible did not recognize him. He authorized the Bible. And if you went against it, you was put in jail. And so that's the biggest secret of iniquity in the world today is that the Bible is the Word of God. That's a damnable lie. It's not the Word of God. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. See, the common man did not have a book until the printing press. And so, this is the mystery of iniquity. And I'm going to be telling you some things, words that's never been heard before in the earth. And I'll tell you this, there's two words of God on earth you've never heard that before. The Word of God was put in an ark. It was written by the finger of God. And God, or if you looked in his ark, he'd kill you. If you touched it, he'd kill you. Because he ordained that. That was his rules to bring you to Christ. When And Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that's a mystery. That's the old covenant. The new covenant did not start until Jesus died on the cross. That's the mystery of iniquity. They, they take the Bible and make it the word of God. Because you cannot discover their sins unless they get them in the Holy Ghost. That's why they don't let me in their churches. Because <laughs> I tell them, I said, that preacher there has been going out with the deacon's wife. <laughs> I tell them, this preacher is not preaching for God. He only wants 10% of your money. I've seen it over, over, over again. They want a, a jet airplane. They want the flesh. And they say, oh, the Lord bless us in the flesh so we can get this up. See, they separate themselves sensually, having not the spirit. They're trying to make the flesh holy. That's the biggest secret, biggest mystery. And when I was over in the spirit world, and I seen all these preachers, they didn't want to hear me. I was telling them, I said, why didn't y'all do this when you was on earth? And a voice was speaking to me through the tunnel. And he said, my voice will be heard again in the land. They wouldn't let the voice of God be heard because they took you captive under an idol. That's the biggest mystery in the world. Do you know why he said, take this little book in the 10th chapter of the book of Rose, take this little book and eat it. <laughs> why did he tell you that? He said, it'll be sweet in your mouth, hillbilly. <laughs> This is the mystery of God today. Eat this little book, he'll be. And it'll be, you know why it's sweet in your mouth? Because it was the Word of God. That's exactly right. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God. And Timothy, you lived under two covenants. But then what about when Jesus preached to the Abraham's seed? The Holy Ghost had not been given. Mm -hmm. Their sins couldn't be forgiven. They're still sacrificing sheep and paying tithe. But when Jesus died on the cross, you no longer eat. The little book. You eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus Christ. And you live by God, by the inner man. When all my hope in churches was gone, there was a voice that said, I can speak to your condition. And he said, there's a voice available to all men. It came on the day of Pentecost. God lives in us. And he said, it has no, nothing to do with doctrines or creeds or or Bibles or nothing. It's God and his children. I'm his son. I'm not his son because of a printing press. They didn't have a Bible for 1,500 years. I'm not his son because of a printing press. I'm his son because Jesus Christ brought me back with his blood. He redeemed me 
by his blood. I'm bought with a price. I was Adam's seed, but he took away that old seed. And I become a new creature. He put his seed in me, which is the Holy Ghost. Don't leave home without this. Don't die without the Holy Ghost living in you. Because this is the mystery of God. Don't go into heaven loving somebody else. Confess your sin. Don't let your sins go in before you. Let your sins come behind you. You confess them. And confess them if you've had children by other men. Because them people think their daddy is this man, but it's another man. I've seen that over and over in my uh, 83 years. I know these things, children. And I'm telling you the plain truth. Don't die with the secrets of the devil in your heart. Because they'll come out at judgment day. Like Naaman told David. He said, you're the man. <laughs> Now, David was a man after God's own heart. He didn't say nothing to that prophet. He didn't kill God's prophet and try to cover it up no more. He knew that God knew. And he said, I've sinned before God. And now what's going to be my punishment? The baby that Bersheba's going to have is going to die. And you're going to have trouble in your kingdom from now on. <laughs> so you see, David was a man of God, trying to hide things like all of us do. But he confessed. And he was one of the greatest men that ever left a footprint on the earth. He loved God. So take all the secrets. If you love somebody and you can't have them, you fall in love with somebody and Jesus said you can't have them, then you flee fornication. And you overcome that to the flesh. You go overcome the things of the flesh by the power of God. Don't let the secrets that you have in you. A lot of people murder people. They do bad things. I've had them come to me and tell me, I'm a murderer. They're trying to get forgiveness through me. I said, you've got to get forgiveness through Jesus Christ. You've got to repent of your sin. There are so many secrets today, not only in government, in politics, and in all the great men, they have secrets. Oh, they have all kind of sexual secrets, all kind of money secrets. Oh, it's horrible. When I get, I would get into them and tell them to you, but they probably wouldn't even put them on you. But they are so many secrets of the devil. He wants money. Money gives you power. Ananias and Tafari, can you imagine this? They gave up the Holy Ghost for money. Don't do that, children. The secrets of your heart will be judged by God in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. And you know this. I don't want you to have but one thing. I want you to have faith in God. I want you to be with Jesus forever. I don't want to control you. I want God's Spirit to control you. I want Jesus to control me. And I'll tell you the truth. The secrets of your heart will be made known. While kneeling in my life of disappointment Lying within my heart I could not see The pieces of my life were scattered about me love reached down for me and I love him because he understands me oh I love him because he set me free I love him because of Mount Calvary and I love him most because he first loved me now I have the strength to serve the Savior his spirit came and set this captive free. Storms of life can never wound the feeling. By faith in God, His voice is guiding me. And I love Him because He understands me. Oh, I love Him because He set me free. Oh, I love Him because of Mount Calvary. Cause first love me. Yes, 
Cause I love him most because he first loved me